So today we are going to uh, discuss about the myocardial infarction and the coronary artery diseases. The much awaited lecture of the ECG series, um, at least for me, um, this would be very important uh, clinically and even for the purposes of examinations. Um, and if you have not already watched the other two videos uh, prior to this one in the lecture series of ECG, uh, you can view them by clicking the card above. Okay, uh, one thing I would like to clear before we move further into the uh, ECG findings of the infarction is that uh, infarction and ischemia are both a different thing. Um, the ischemia refers to the loss of, uh, sorry, not the loss, it refers to the lack of oxygen supply uh, in comparison to the demand of the uh, any tissue. Uh, it's a general principle that uh, ischemia refers to the lack of oxygen supply uh, uh, to, and it doesn't meet the requirement of the tissue. However, uh, infarction, on the other hand, means that the once the ischemia is prolonged, uh, it would lead to infarction. Okay, infarction is the when the tissue has died, it has necrosed. Uh, that is what I have mentioned over here. Infarction means the tissue has necrosed, and that is due to the prolonged ischemia. Now, uh, particularly uh, in case of the heart, when there's ischemia, uh, generally we, when we do the lab diagnostics, uh, we have this uh, enzymes called CKMB and the troponins that are found in the blood. Um, usually uh, minutes or generally uh, uh, after six to eight hours of infarct, uh, but they, some enzymes may also be found after minutes or hour or so. Now, uh, the diagnosis of the uh, infarction uh, MI is usually clinically as and lab and with the help of ECG findings. Now, before we move into understanding of the ECG changes, I would like to briefly uh, overview the normal comparisons um, that the what the general idea of this uh, lecture. So the important thing to keep in mind is that the repolarization changes are seen in case of the ischemia. However, the depolarization changes are seen in case of the infarction. And uh, the idea here is that uh, the repol when the ATP are less because of the ischemia, the ATP uh, declines. And because of this, the Na plus K plus pumps fail. And uh, because of this, there is no polarization. There is no, uh, the cell won't be able to repolarize. However, uh, when there is infarction, the cell um, is almost depolarized because the cell has lost its ability to either depolarize or and also repolarize. So the repolarization defects are seen mainly in case of the ischemia and the depolarization defects are mainly seen in the uh, infarction. Now, now the another thing to keep in mind is that uh, why the ST segments and the T waves are affected in the ischemia. That is why the repolarization affects the ST segment and T waves and not the QRS complex. To understand this, we need to go back to the physiology. Uh, recall the cardiac cycle. We have the phase four starting, then zero phase, then the first phase, phase two, and then phase three, then phase four again. Now, let me mark the phase two and the phase four, which we are going to talk here. And uh, also, uh, let us draw the ECG uh, over your P wave, then our QRS complex. Then we have this is our two T wave. T wave would be slightly greater than the P wave, uh, but it doesn't matter. We need to understand the concept here. Okay, so uh, what uh, is represented by P wave and QRS complex? Yes, they represent the depolarization. And up till here, we have depolarization happening. But what happens to in the ST segment? What happens in the ST segment? Yes, in this phase, we have this is the phase two of the cardiac cycle. And in this phase, uh, there is isoelectric nature. So uh, isoelectricity is maintained over here because here the sustained contraction is there. Now in the phase four also, this is the isoelectric phase and uh, over here, the TP segment. The TP segment also uh, is the isoelectric. Therefore, we see uh, it is very important to understand that these things are uh, ST segment, TP segment and the TP, the T wave itself. You know what is TP, T wave, the T wave, 
the T wave represents the repolarization. You know, uh, but uh, let's let's go to it once again. What happened? Now another thing to bear in mind is that the uh, depolarization occurs from endocardium to the epicardium. Okay, so uh, let's get back a one step and understand. Normally the cells are in a depolarized negative state. And uh, when there is depolarization, these cells become positive and this wave of positive charge is moving in this direction. So the wave of positive charge moving in this direction would make a positive deflection in P wave and a QRS complex. Now uh, imagine what has happened next. Uh, let me draw the state of complete depolarized state. Okay, so uh, you have kept in mind that depolarization happens from endocardium to epicardium and it's the wave of positive charge that's why it causes the positive deviation now uh, once the cells have uh, depolarized they would of course uh, repolarize in nature okay so during the repolarization the the wave of negative charge flows from epicardium to the endocardium high yield principle now this is a wave of negative charge moving in the this direction so a uh, wave of negative charge would be moving in this direction is same as the uh, wave of positive charge moving in this direction and that is why we get a t wave uh, not that large but we let me rub it we get a t wave okay and uh, because of this uh, we understand that t wave is uh, formed in the um, repolarization phase so now we can understand uh, the changes in the um, the ischemia the ecg findings in the ischemia um, as i've already said the repolarization abnormalities are seen in case of the ischemia and depolarization in case of the infarction and that's because of the idea of na plus k plus pump filling and the cells are not able to repolarize the second thing that i have told you people is that repolarization affects the st segment and the t waves and uh, after that when the infarction has occurred then and only then the qrs complex is uh, changes are seen in the ecg once again the t wave is also affected uh, we would discuss the inversion why um, there is inversion in a moment then uh, the st depression occurs in the ischemia this too we are going to discuss in a moment also the u waves are abnormal and recall what are the u waves u waves are the waves that are formed after the uh, t wave and they represent the purkinje uh, fiber repolarization and uh, this uh, these are abnormal or they belong because uh, the repolarization of the myocardium cells are taking some long time and uh, that's uh, seen as a abnormal u wave in the ecg now why is there t wave inversion and st depression in the ischemia um, to get this let's go back to a whiteboard now recall a moment ago i have told you that repolarization occurs in this direction that is from epicardium to endocardium and depolarization occurs from endocardium to um, the uh, epicardium okay so uh, what happens here uh, in case of the ischemia that the repolarization is in this direction and the depolarization is also in the same direction the problem is with the repolarization that it is happening in this direction so this would cause a negative deviation in case of the uh, t wave because uh, it, it, this is a repolarization is always a wave of negative charge and a wave of negative charge moving in the uh, right side that is in this direction would actually be a uh, positive wave positive wave moving in the opposite direction and if i place a lead over here uh, what we see is that the wave of positive charge is moving away from the positive electrode and hence we see a t wave inversion now what's what's the idea for the st segment depression in ischemia in ischemia means if i say the partial ischemia okay uh, now to understand that we 
uh, need to see that uh, we have this endocardium then we have the myocardium this is endocardium then we have the myocardium and this one would be our epicardium so uh, what is happening that coronary supply from here from outside to inside and what would happen if the coronaries are partially blocked yes the this would area this sub endocardial region would be the first one to blow away that is it would be ischemic and ischemia prolonged would lead to injury and injury would lead to necrosis that is the infarction so normally the sub epicardial region of the myocardium would depolarize in normal manner that is normal rate but this region the necrotic region would depolarize slowly and this would appear that this region is causing a depolarization you know that this region is already depolarized so it would see that oh it's this uh, sub endocardial region is not depolarized so let me go and depolarize it and in this manner it would create a this kind of dipole and if i place a lead over here in this direction that would say okay i see a negative dipole and uh, that's during the depolarization phase so let me go ahead and uh, create a st depression because that's the wave uh, phase two rep is represented by this and so guys once again uh, what is this that uh, dipole showing it's showing the phase two and we have this st segment and that's also representing the phase two so uh, this is the scenario for the st depression now what happens uh, let us go one step further and see if there is a sub epicardial infarction that is the coronaries have completely blocked that the coronaries are completely blocked and this would create an area this would create the whole necrosis sub endocardial sub epicardial that is it will create a transmural infarct if, if the coronaries are not opened okay so that would create a transmural in in fact or uh, here we can say that it sometimes some uh, books refer it as sub epicardial injury or sub epicardial in fact but uh, the transmural in fact is better thing because it involves the whole myocardium and hence the name so uh, what happens over here is that uh, that whole uh, myocardium is struggling to depolarize Remember I said that depolarization is affected in ischemia so if the coronaries are completely blocked then that injury would ultimately lead to a infarction so we are talking about ischem uh, not uh, infarct not ischemia over here but we are talking about infarction right now okay um, so let's see what is happening uh, the the myocardium is just struggling the depolarization is moving from endocardium to epicardium but it is slowly 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 depolarizing and that would create a finding of uh, because the depolarization is very slow and still it is depolarizing the whole my, my, uh, the myocardium so it would create a st elevation because the contraction the depolarization is still happening in the whole myocardium but at a slow rate and that would causes a st elevation further we would discuss in the uh, next slides so uh, but the main important point over here is that st depression okay and t wave inversion both we have seen okay so with the big picture in the mind let's revisit our uh, uh, previous slide the repolarization damages defects are seen in the st segment while the QRS complex uh, is in the depolarized depolarization the T wave also represents the depolarization and the inversion is because the direction of repolarization has uh, is same as the direction of the depolarization and that creates an inverted T wave the ST depression is because the sub epic sub endocardial infarct uh, or the injury um, that ultimately causes the depolarization uh, to move in the uh, towards the endocardium and uh, abnormal u wave as i've already mentioned are because slow contract slow conduction or the slowly uh, depolarizing myocardial layers okay now here i have provided a uh, summary table for the sub endocardial infa uh, sorry ischemia 
and uh, transmural ischemia and uh, it's simple that subendocardial would lead to st depression as i've said while the transmural would lead to uh, i'm talking about ischemia once again so ischemia affects more uh, of the uh, the endocardium region and that's why we are seeing uh, st depression remember if this uh, transmural ischemia converts to a infarct this would turn to STEMI, ST elevation, ST elevation would be there. Okay, so uh, bear this in mind that transmural ischemia would be said as ST depression and there would be another entity that is the T wave inversion. Okay, now what would happen if the ischemia persists? As I've already mentioned, that if the coronaries are partially blocked, it would lead to a subendocardial injury and ultimately leading to a subendocardial infarction. And if the coronaries are completely blocked, either due to vasospasm or due to some thrombus or emboli or atherosclerosis, that would ultimately cause the subepicardial region to also get involved and that would lead to a transmural infarct. Okay. The necrotic tissue is electrically inert as i've already said that the necrotic tissue as or the infected tissue neither depolarize or repolarize properly um, it uh, repolarize or depolarize very slowly uh, and the infarction once occurred it causes a depolarization defect but the repolarization defects changes are seen in uh, which segment can you say that excellent in the st segment and the t wave in form of the inversion and depression now uh, let's talk about the st elevation myocardial infarction um, very important to know and very high yield for the purposes of examination um, the st that is the STEMI is divided into three phases hyperacute evolved and chronic the this is based on the timings that uh, for a few minutes uh, if the infarction is there then we say it's the hype in the, the phase of hyperacute when the phase is um, hours uh, minutes to hours we call it as the evolved phase or in the full fully evolved phase and the chronic stage is days to months that the changes that occur after the mi now uh, generally in the the common for all of these phases would be that ventricular activation time of course that would increase because the ventricles would slowly contract why they would slowly contract actually this uh, time would increase because uh, some part is necrosed or died and that is uh, not properly depolarizing repolarizing and that causes uh, prolonged uh, time and it's not hard to imagine that it would cause a prolonged ventricular activation and that's greater than uh, 45 milliseconds in the ECG. Now before we move further I need to uh, tell you that the leads uh, we are not going to talk about the leads each and every time we would rather uh, see those leads when we study the culprit main culprit uh, artery that is occluded or vasospastic um, which which would be uh, when we see that certain leads represent certain areas and if those areas are infected that would cause a changes in those leads otherwise general generally speaking the chest leads are usually seen um, because you know i've already said in the previous lecture that uh, hypertrophies are usually measured by the chest leads and that too only of the ventricles we cannot measure remember we cannot measure the hypertrophies of the atria uh, with the help of the chest leads also only ventricles okay so with this thing in mind let's go ahead now in the st elevation uh, st segment elevation as comes in the name of the STEMI um, that the leads uh, of the affected area are of course they show the st elevation now the general principle in ECG is that if there are one lead shows some elevation uh, elevation or depression the other the reciprocal lead that is uh, that detects the dipole in the opposite direction would show reciprocal ST depression to that lead now there are some ST segment elevation causes that are high to know apart from MI so these are the prince metal angina you know it's the vasospastic angina and it responds to usually nitrates when nitrates are there they open it 
and then we have the LBB. Now the idea in the LBB uh, Brugada syndrome and left ventricle hypertrophy is that they actually prolong the depolarization. What do they do? They actually prolong the depolarization, slowing of the depolarization uh, in the LBB. What is happening? Left bundle branch block. The depolarization is not moving in a fast uh, or fast manner. That normal manner, it's slow. So that is causing a prolonged depolarization and that causes a uh, ST elevation. In Brugada syndrome also, there is slow electrical conduction and that again leads to ST elevation. Then uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, more the hypertrophy, larger a dipole required than normal, larger a dipole required than normal, more time it takes to travel and of course that would lead to a slow conduction because time increases. That's why again there is a ST elevation. In pericarditis, there is subepicardial damage as i've already mentioned the subepicardial damage again causes the st elevation as i've already mentioned that uh, the t wave inversion would be there in ischemia and hence that would be the case in the hyperacute phase of the myocardial infarction and also in the fully evolved phase of the myocardial infarction but uh, uh, there is a point to be kept in mind that T wave inversion are also seen in general population. Uh, it may be normal and that is in the case of late 3 AVR and V1. However, high point that if it's in between the V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6, then it's obviously abnormal and suggestive of uh, uh, MI. So last thing to see he here is that the uh, whenever there is inversion that should be greater than one millimeter because as i've said that t wave may occur normally and this would uh, to identify that it's abnormal so uh, some general idea we can general uh, some sort of general rule we can see is that it's it should be greater than one millimeter now j point what is the j point j point represents the joining point of between the end of the qrs complex and the start of st segment so if the uh, j point is elevated um, once again it is uh, in case of STEMI most of the time abnormal q waves um, this requires a bit of explanation that if we have our heart like this and there is an infarction over here so what is happening is that this infarct behaves as an electrical inert i've already mentioned so it behaves like a uh, film a window uh, and uh, if say this is the septum and the heart is depolarizing so uh, the ultimate uh, thing that this window would see is that oh that depolarization is from in this direction and if i place a lead over here then that would see that during the time of depolarization the wave is moving away so instead that would cause a more depressed q wave okay remember that anything after uh, the p wave uh, anything depression any depression after the p wave is called q wave so uh, this depressed form of the q wave is abnormal and it's it says that it is a abnormal q wave the finding of the uh, transmural infarct okay but uh, the criteria is that it should be greater than 2 millimeter in amplitude and uh, it should be greater than 0 0.04 seconds okay so keep this idea in mind um the there are some other causes of the abnormal q wave and those things are to be kept in mind um while uh, as a differential okay so those are the bundle branch uh, blocks and uh, second is WPW. So uh, just keep these things in back of your mind while you see the uh, abnormal Q wave. Okay. Okay. So finally, um, let's discuss what happens in the hyperacute phase, in the uh, fully evolved phase, and in the uh, chronic uh, or after the recovery in the MI. So uh, whenever uh, um, talking about the q wave the abnormal q wave is um, is a result of that window or the hole that we had discussed uh, in the previous slide and uh, because of that it is not seen whenever there is ischemia but that is in the early phases the early phase can be compared to ischemia okay and uh, the later phase can be compared to mi 
and the this fully evolved phase uh, so that q wave is pathologic in both of them now j point uh, as i've already mentioned in the st elevation phases uh, of course in STEMI that would be elevated and st ele elevation is of course the feature of the STEMI then the t wave uh, is tall and peaked during the early phases but uh, it is inverted um, because of the underlying principles i've already discussed and as the time passes the t wave starts to become normal uh, okay and uh, one more thing that we have not discussed yet is that the r waves now the r waves are relatively tall than the s waves earlier in the early phase of the uh, mi but uh, slowly as the infarction has occurred that it, the heart loses its contraction power and uh, this causes a dec 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 uh, decreased amplitude and ultimately it uh, in the long term also there is decreased uh, contracted power of the heart so uh, the r wave is tall in the early phase uh, in comparison to the s wave and uh, uh, later in the late phase it it because of the decreased contraction it's uh, decreased amplitude lastly let us uh, just uh, briefly see what is the n stemi uh, the n stemi the non st se segment elevation mi and uh, uh, it is uh, the as i've already mentioned it is seen in the uh, subendocardial lesion because n stemi n stemi means st depression instead we can conversely say it as st depression and uh, i've already said that it occurs in the subendocardial region and uh, that's what i have mentioned here that the st depression must be uh, greater than 0.5 mm amplitude or we can say half small boxes and that too in consecutive lead say v4 v5 v5 v6 then uh, T wave inversion also I have mentioned uh, for the obvious reasons that repolarization direction has changed. Now there are some other uh, uh, very uh, great examples for the ST depression uh, which are high yield to be aware of. And uh, these are that ST depression is also caused by digitalis. Okay. What does digitalis normally does? Digitalis blocks the Na plus K plus pump and that causes the increased sodium concentration and increased sodium concentration causes it to be exchanged uh, with the calcium because of the na plus uh, uh, calcium exchanger now this uh, in turn causes increased calcium concentration and uh, the prolonged phase of contraction remember so uh, i have said that that prolonged phase this would be the cardiac cycle this is the phase two the prolongation of this phase is actually prolonging the st segment i have already mentioned that phase two uh, in the ecg is represented by the st segment and hence we can say the rbb again there is uh, st depression because there's prolongation of the phase and uh, um, Another thing uh, uh, sort of which we can derive from the digitalis toxicity is that hypokalemia can be there because uh, if there is K plus can't move inside then actually we can see that Na plus K plus pump is failing and that would again cause the ink prolongation of the uh, phase 2 and that would be again causing the ST depression. With this, I conclude off this uh, lecture that would be the part 1 of the myocardial infarction. In the next lecture, we would be talking about the uh, how to identify the culprit artery and what leads uh, we want to see uh, to identify which area has been infarcted. Um, again, uh, both of these would be the very high yield to know. Um, hope you like the video, guys. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Bye.